I wrecked my tank. First off, no you didn't. I know cyanobacteria is frustrating. It can cover your sand bed, overtake your rock work, smother corals, and make your reef look like a slimy red disaster. But before you throw in the towel and start dosing ChemiClean or Red Slime Remover, which can work, let me help you understand why cyano shows up in the first place, and more importantly, how you can get rid of it for good. Despite looking like algae and even being referred to as red slime algae, cyanobacteria is actually a photosynthetic bacteria. It's one of the oldest life forms on Earth and exists in virtually every aquatic environment, including your reef tank. Filamentous cyanobacteria is typically what we see in our reef tanks, and there are several different colors it can appear in. This includes most commonly red and purple, but also includes green, blue, brown, and even black mats that cover sand, rocks, and even corals. It reproduces rapidly through division like most other bacteria, but some filamentous cyano can also form climate-resistant spores when environmental conditions become harsh, making them incredibly resilient and able to stay dormant until favorable conditions are available. Like in your newly set up reef tank, and once it pops up, it can spread like wildfire if left unchecked. The good news is the hobby has come a really long way and we now have a much better understanding of why cyano shows up in our reef tank and how to most effectively treat a cyano outbreak. But how did cyano get into your tank in the first place? Like most pests, cyano didn't just appear out of nowhere. You introduced it and I know you didn't do that on purpose, but cyano is so incredibly prevalent, it is nearly impossible to prevent getting into your reef tank. That being said, here's how it typically enters your system. You can get it from live rock and live sand. Even clean sources can harbor dormant cyano cells. Frag plugs, coral skeletons, invertebrates, and even fish. Cyano can hitchhike into your tank on just about anything, even a fish's slime coat. Water from another system. Yes, any water from the bag that gets into your tank could easily bring cyano along with it. All it takes is a drop. And airborne spores are also a possibility. Believe it or not, some species of cyano can even travel via airborne particulates. While that isn't the most likely way that reefers are getting cyano into their aquariums, it does go to show just how easy it is for cyano to travel from one place to another. So can you even stop cyano from getting into your tank? The short answer is no. Despite your best efforts, there is little you can do to prevent cyano from getting into your reef tank. And almost every new tank will have some amount of cyano pop up, usually on the sand bed, but sometimes also on the rock. It is a common part of new tank syndrome, which in essence is a lack of a healthy and competitive microbiome. In other words, all of those various microbes that need to develop in a reef tank in order to have a healthy, stable microbiome just aren't there yet. Or if they are present, they aren't in the numbers they need to be in to successfully outcompete the cyano. Eventually, over time, most reef tanks will overcome a small cyano outbreak simply by maturing. But there are definitely steps that we can take as reefers to help that happen as quickly as possible, while also limiting Cyano's ability to take over in the interim. Step number one, especially for a new aquarium, is to pump up your reef's microbiome. Not only do you want a good mix of nitrifying bacteria, but there are also all kinds of beneficial bacteria and other microbes found on a thriving reef. Starting your reef tank with Carib Sea's Ocean Direct Live Sand or Aquabiomics Cultured Live Reef Sand or Rubble is a fantastic path to a healthy microbiome. For those who already have their reef set up, using a product like Aquaforest's Life Source can work incredibly well at bringing the missing elements of a healthy microbiome to your reef aquarium. And that is a huge step in the right direction. But you're here because you likely already have a sizable cyano outbreak. So beyond bolstering your microbiome, what steps can you take towards beating back the cyano outbreak that you already have? There are five key approaches to tackling a full-blown cyano outbreak. Sand sifters and stirrers, manual removal, improved maintenance, increasing flow and reducing dead spots, and as a last resort, chemical treatment. So let's break these down, starting with sand sifters and stirrers. Stirrers. Stirrers is a terrible word. 
While we aren't currently aware of any true cyano predators, there are reef inhabitants that can help foil cyano's plan of taking over your sandbed. Nazarius snails burrow into sandbeds, helping to keep them aerated. They also do a great job of consuming excess meaty foods before they can break down. They're incredibly easy to care for, are capable of reproducing on their own, and overall are a staple for any reef aquarium with substrate. Fighting conchs and similar small conch species help turn over sand and consume detritus and excess food before cyano can use it as fuel. Unlike other snails, they have a foot they use to push themselves along the sand bed and aren't able to climb around the glass and even find traversing rock work difficult, meaning they tend to stay on the sand. They are omnivorous and easy to care for, plus they have the cutest little eyes. Sand sifting starfish are another good option. They keep the sand aerated and free of detritus buildup, but they only fare well in established tanks. Adding one too early on might end in a starved starfish. You will also rarely ever see them as they spend almost all of their time under the sand. While you may see some people suggesting sand sifting gobies, I don't generally recommend them. While diamond and sleeper gobies do a great job of keeping the sand bed aerated and turned over, they do require specialized care, particularly with feeding, meaning special attention from you. So unless you're up for the challenge, they aren't the best option. Now, it is unlikely that these critters will be able to fully remove an existing cyano outbreak, but they can help deal with one of the potential underlying issues and prevent a cyano outbreak from ever happening by taking care of any excess nutrients that might be building up in the sand bed. Now let's move on to manual removal. Physically removing as much cyano as possible can help reduce the total amount of cyanobacteria in the system, as well as provide some relief for any corals or sessile invertebrates that that cyano might be smothering. The easiest way to remove cyano is by siphoning it out. This works best with a half inch or three quarter inch hose without a gravel vacuum on the end. Start the siphon and then hover it over top of the cyano and it should get pulled up and off the substrate and out of the aquarium. If it's stuck to rocks and siphoning isn't working, you can blow it off with a pump or a turkey baster and either net or siphon out the floating bits or allow your filtration to remove it. Just be sure to wash out your filter socks once the tank clears up to make sure that that cyano doesn't spread. Improving your maintenance habits is also a great way to beat back cyano and if you're already in there siphoning it out, you can also vacuum your sand bed to make sure there isn't a buildup of detritus that is feeding that cyano and even go a step further by doing a water change to make sure nutrients aren't getting out of hand. While excess nutrients won't cause cyano on their own, they can definitely help fuel cyano growth, so test your nutrients. Keeping phosphate between 0.02 and 0.06 and nitrate between 5 and 10 ppm is a good practice, and it's easy enough to do. The water changes and gravel vacuuming I mentioned are effective ways to reduce nutrients along with keeping up with your mechanical filtration, whether that's regularly cleaning your filter socks and foam pads every few days, or even easier, using an automatic fleece roller that pulls waste out of the system for you. Next, you can make it harder for cyano to get a foothold by increasing the flow in your reef and reducing dead spots. Cyano loves stagnant areas, so improving circulation can make it harder for cyano to settle and spread. You can do this by adjusting the position of your circulation pumps to eliminate dead zones. Sometimes increasing the flow rate of a DC pump will accomplish this. Sometimes you'll need to move the pump to a better spot, and in some cases you may find adding another pump to increase the flow in a specific area is the best course of action. Just avoid blasting cyano directly. Instead, focus on creating random turbulent flow that prevents detritus from settling, which will make it harder for detritus to build up in low flow areas like corners, as well as behind or between rocks. Now, if the cyano is still around and going strong, even after you've tried everything that we've talked about so far, sometimes killing it off with ChemiClean, red slime remover, or similar products is the nail in the coffin. These antibiotic treatments effectively kill the cyano, removing it from those surfaces all at once, making it easier for new beneficial microbes to take over so cyano can no longer grow back in those places. Make sure to follow the directions very carefully. While overall being quite safe, this isn't something you'd want to accidentally overdose. So take your time, it'll only take one or two doses over a 
few days to be effective. It is going to feel like the silver bullet that you should have started with in the first place, but it is only truly effective at wiping out cyano permanently if everything else we've already talked about is already in place to make sure that cyano will have a terribly hard time of ever getting its foothold again. And for most of us, just tending to that microbiome and making sure you have good maintenance habits and proper flow is going to be all it takes to overcome a little bit of cyano. So don't panic. Don't rush and dump a bunch of antibiotics into your tank. Just stay consistent, bolster that microbiome, and let nature do its thing. Cyano probably won't be the worst pest you face. And on that note, if you want help defeating all of the most annoying and dastardly reef pests, you can check out the rest of our videos in this series right here. No need to suffer. We can do this together.